Welcome to the Mediterranean Sea, the incubator of Western civilization, a sea surrounded by three different continents, and the home of our boat and crew. Before starting our expedition though, there are a few things you should know about this particular part of the world. First, it got its name from the Romans. Mediterra, meaning the center of the world, which it was believed to be for a long time. While the Romans controlled this body of water for a while, it is now bordered by 22 different countries. In 2020, the IUCN, in partnership with Environmental Action, brought out a report stating that those bordering countries leak about 230,000 tons of plastic every year into the Mediterranean Sea, turning it from mer nostrum, as the Italians call it, to mer plasticum. In this study, 94% of all this plastic results from mismanaged waste. All of this may have already resulted in more than 1 million tons of plastic being within the Mediterranean. Equipped with a plankton net, we aim to better quantify the real amount of plastic pollution along our route. But we'll also organize cleanups and competitions along the way to raise more awareness and shine a light on existing issues. Apart from all the bordering countries, the Mediterranean is also home to more than 3,000 islands. While many of them are in Greece and Croatia, the two biggest ones are Italian, Sardinia and Sicily, which is where we aim to spend the next winter. Already in ancient times, the Mediterranean was split into smaller seas, which is also where the term roaming the seven seas comes from. By now, however, we added yet another one to the list, making it eight seas. Furthermore, the Mediterranean basin is home to 15 million people. However, during summer around 300 million people from all over the world come to visit these coastlines. That is about one-third of global tourism every year. And this is adding substantially to the impact on the sea, but also the use of resources along the Mediterranean coastline. And while the Mediterranean countries don't have excessively big fishing boats to feed all their guests, the sheer amount of small-scale fisheries is enough to push fish stocks to a steady decline. Since the start of industrial fishing, more than 75% of the local stocks have become critical. Since 2016 the situation got slightly better, but the pressure is still too much for fish stocks to recover. Another big driving factor for the Mediterranean at this stage is shipping traffic. More than one third of global shipping takes the shortcut through the Mediterranean every year, making it one of the busiest lanes in the world. And with more traffic comes more noise. This year we will for the first time be recording underwater sounds 
documenting not only noises of marine mammals, but also noise pollution, one of the major threats to marine mammals such as whales and dolphins. With more and bigger ships moving throughout these waters every year, of course, the sound level increases with them inaudible farce. All this shipping traffic is just one of the effects of the construction of the Suez Canal. Through Suez, not only ships enter the Mediterranean Sea though. More than 1,000 introduced species already found their way into this amazing biodiversity hotspot. According to the IUCN, we can find anywhere between 15,000 and 25,000 species in the Mediterranean region. 60% of all those are endemic to the region, meaning they do not exist anywhere else in the world. Due to a variety of threats, more than 19% of all those species are already threatened or endangered, and a few already went extinct. Especially when it comes to marine wildlife, one of the reasons why many species vanish before anything happens is that data is simply missing. This means that as long as there is no data evidence that a species is threatened or endangered, it will simply be declared as data deficient, and that again means no protective status whatsoever. This is mostly true for marine mammals, but also many other marine species. Just one of many reasons to get going with our documentation work throughout the Mediterranean Sea, during which we collect sightings of all the species we encounter during snorkeling and diving trips, but also macrofauna that we see while underway. All the sightings will be collected and published on the website, as well as presented in the ongoing videos right here. And the best part is that you can join us on our journey not just as a spectator, but actually as an active participant, by sharing your thoughts, questions, and ideas with us in the comments. We are right now finishing up the last jobs on the boat, to have her expedition ready once again, and will soon start sailing from the northern end of the Adriatic, visiting a series of researchers and NGOs along the route, that leads us from Monfalcone, over to Croatia, following the coast of Istria, and the Croatian islands all the way to Dubrovnik. From there we will once again cross the Adriatic Sea back to Italy and follow the boot all the way to Sicily. While we have a lot of exciting projects already planned along the way, we don't want to spoil the surprise just yet, so make sure to check back in with us and stay tuned and involved. So, what species and impacts would you like to focus on or hear more about? Write us a comment now and we will try to get into it in one of our next episodes.